When Lewis and Clark came to our country on the Big River, they came and did not understand the ways of our world. And we knew that they were struggling to exist in this place. Our people thought that they were having a precarious existence and that our role was to help them so that they could get home where they belonged. They were escorted by two Nez Perce headmen into our area, and our people are related to those same uh, families of those Nez Perce men. They passed by the headman's camp, Yalep, and they pass his camp and have the Nez Perce men yell across the Columbia River for him to follow and come down to where they're going to camp that night. That's not a typical diplomatic gesture when you're a visitor in our homeland for someone to yell across the river and say, come on down to where we're camping tonight. So they had some peculiar habits and our people did go down um, that evening. They had already retired. Our uh, headman and his, the men who escorted him camped that night and waited for them to arise the next day. And of course, Lewis and Clark were always in a hurry to get where they were going to the Pacific Ocean. And when they came back through our country, Yalep, the same man, said that they had promised to stay longer when they came through the first time. So he asked them to stay another night or two, and then he would help them get across the river with all of their goods. That night, when they agreed to stay, on April 27th of 1806, Native peoples from all of the villages around gathered in Yelup's camp. They camped with him, and they were there that night to witness a ceremony. Lewis and Clark didn't actually understand what was happening because they thought it was more festival-like. They didn't understand that our dances were prayer dances, but when they described the people going around and the method of going around and the singing, what's happening is a prayer service. And our people are singing not only songs of worship, but we are, in our own languages of course, telling of the prophecy. That night, it was announced that the prophecy that had been had many years before had been fulfilled. That prophecy was that strange people would come into our lands, that we would face difficult times, and that if we survive the difficult times, we might become strong again. And we hope that that is what is happening today. When Lewis and Clark were amongst us, we were the only people in this landscape. They were transients, we were residents. We were not suspicious of Lewis and Clark, and we tried to entreat with them that we wanted to set up trading relationships as they came and indicated they wanted with our people as well. That was part of President Jefferson's instruction to them. They were also here doing reconnaissance on the resources of this landscape, the friendliness of our people, and the possibility of what this imagined empty canvas could look like if it was occupied by Americans. Not much later, in 1836, the American missionaries come to this landscape. We had recruited them to come and be our teachers and live amongst us. Unfortunately, there were many things that caused suspicion to grow over time. And by 1847, we were confident that the white men who lived amongst us, especially Dr. Marcus Whitman, had their eyes on their, our country and they were making it hospitable for all of the immigrants who were coming here to set up and take our lands. 